So I finally got around to reading Struck by Jennifer Bosworth, who is actually not Jennifer Bosworth anymore. She's Jennifer Wolf now, but... And uh, I don't really know how to introduce this. You know, I don't know how to start this off. There's nothing about this book that, like, comes together in such a way that allows me to just say, yes, this is what it's about, and this is how it made me feel. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. The setup for the story is really weird. It's about a girl named Mia Price who is addicted to being struck by lightning, and so her family moved to Los Angeles, where it doesn't rain very often, and therefore there's not much lightning. Uh, but then there is a massive earthquake which destroys most of the city and leaves them cut off from the rest of the world. And then there are two separate cults that think Mia is the key to the end of the world. And in spite of that, it's not as weird as it might sound. Like, while you're reading, it's not actually that weird. Or at least it doesn't seem that weird, I don't know. Maybe I just got Stockholm Syndrome, got sucked in or something. Like. It's bizarrely mundane a lot of the time, like, the actual events of the story aren't that strange up until near the end, near the climax. Uh, the characters don't have any really out-there personalities, except for, like, maybe the villain. And, like, to give you an example of how not weird this feels, even though it probably should, despite Los Angeles being you know, destroyed and being cut off from the world, and there's very little food, very little water and electricity, very little medicine, and, like, law and order has almost completely broken down. In spite of all that, the main characters all have to go to school still. Like, Mia and her brother drive to their old high school every day, and they go to class there. And, like, they mention things are different than they used to be, because, you know, the earthquake destroyed a bunch of stuff, a bunch of people are dead, but I, it, it's weird because that's not weird, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like, this story is full of stuff like that, which is just too mundane, and it feels like something that would happen in real life almost, even though the circumstances are so out there. So this book is weird in some ways because it isn't weird. I suppose I should finally get around to saying whether or not I liked this. Uh, I did. You know, I, I liked it. I wanted to love it, though, because, you know, the setup for it is just so bizarre and out there that I was expecting it to be, like, really kooky and weird, uh, especially because this is a first-time author. Like, Jennifer Bosworth slash Wolf has written other books since then, uh, but, you know, this was her first one, so I was like, okay, yeah, w weird stuff. Let's see what goes on, but it, it, <laughs> I don't know. It just wasn't that weird, and there's parts of it which are just, like, clumsy and not that well put together. So, while, again, I did like it, I just, I couldn't bring myself to love it. It's a good book, but I can't say it's great. Part of why it's so difficult to talk about this book is that it's really hard to pin it down or define what it is, you know? Like, it's hard to define what genre it fits into, it's hard to really say what it's about beyond the broad strokes, it's hard to point out any, like, unifying themes or anything. Like, it's just... I, I don't know, it's kind of all over the place, and I feel like that should make me hate it, but I just I just don't. So, <clears throat> I'm going to have like a regular review bit, and then there will be spoilers, and hopefully the spoiler section will give you an idea of just how weird it was to go through this, even though a lot of the events aren't that weird. Like, I keep using the word weird, I'm sorry, it, but that is just the thing that comes to mind whenever I think about pretty much any aspect of this book. So like I said earlier, this is a book about a girl named Mia Price. She's addicted to being struck by lightning. She's in Los Angeles. Big earthquake happens. Suddenly it's basically a post-apocalyptic wasteland where everyone is fighting over food and stuff. And there are two separate cults that try to recruit her and think that she is the key to ending slash saving the world. Uh, there's one called The Followers, which is led by this guy called Rance Ridley Prophet. And if you saw my video on book trailers, or you watched my stream where we went over some of them, you know what this guy looks like, and it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Three days from now, God's storm will arrive and cleanse this earth of the wicked. Only you, my followers, will be saved. Uh, also, yes, his name is Rance Ridley Prophet. Like they mentioned in the book, he had his last name legally changed to Prophet. 
<laughs> because subtlety, I guess, I don't know. And he just runs a cult called The Followers. And there are these people called The Seekers who tell Mia that she has special powers and The Seekers also have crazy special powers. And I mean, that's not really a spoiler. That happens like really early on. And I think you could probably figure there's something supernatural going on here just based on the premise. But still, that that's basically what's going on here. And also there is a skyscraper, which is entirely a nightclub. Like, yeah, at the epicenter of the earthquake, all the buildings went down except for this one skyscraper, which is just standing there tall and defiant, I guess, at, but it's just turned into one giant nightclub now, and it's just constantly full of people called rovers who don't really do anything in the story. <laughs> like, there's no characters who are important to the plot who are rovers. The rovers as a group don't really do anything. They're just there <laughs> filling up that entire skyscraper and throwing a party <laughs> at the end of the world. This book is very much a standalone, you know, like, by the end of the story, it doesn't end on, like, a cliffhanger or anything, and I feel like I got most everything out of it, you know, it, I feel like there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's a satisfying conclusion, or at least mostly satisfying conclusion, uh, but it is open for sequels at the same time, and, I mean, this was, uh, 2011, I think, is when it came out, so that was, like, you know, when the dystopia boom was super big, and everyone was trying to cash in and be the Hunger Games, and... Th this one, it might sound kind of like it's one of those, and it is definitely drawing some inspiration from it, but it's really not. It's very much its own thing, and the fact that it's not a series, it's not stretched out more than one book, is kind of proof of that. The book also is not particularly long or short. Like, it's a little under 400 pages. You can see there, it's, it's not that thick, uh, but it's a decent length. But it feels really short. You know, looking back on it, it feels like not that much happens, and... That sounds like a criticism, but not really. Because usually when you say not much happens in a book, that's because it's boring and events don't really, they aren't that exciting and they don't feel like they're leading into one another or anything. And this one, we have some problems with that. Like uh, a lot of the plot is basically just Mia meeting somebody and getting into trouble and then Mia meeting somebody else and then getting into trouble and Mia meeting somebody else and getting into trouble. And all the while there's exposition going on, uh, but like, it doesn't really seem to build to anything until near the very end when the villain becomes a bigger deal and then his plan comes into motion and then we go to the climax. But yeah, up until then, it's just like, yep, here's Mia meeting Jeremy, who is like, I guess her bad boy love interest or whatever. Here's Mia meeting Katrina, who is w one of the seekers who tells her that she has special powers. Here's her going to buy something from a drug dealer, but then things go wrong. You know, it's like, it's a, it's an issue with the story structure and pacing, and, like, again, it's not horrible because most of these events are fine on their own. Like, they're not individually boring, but looking back on it, it just feels like it goes by really quick and not always in a good way. The villain, Rance Ridley Prophet, seems, like, really powerful and intimidating at first. You know, he has the minds of his followers in his grip just by speaking to them, you know? And hell, he's even blind, and he is still really good at getting people onto his side. Like, like I, I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, he seems like a very powerful cult leader, even before the world ended, or the world didn't end, but even before the massive disaster that destroyed most of Los Angeles, and then after that disaster happened and people are looking for hope and stuff, like, he takes advantage of their fear and their despair, and he brings in more and more people into the fold, and he seems like, you know, like a big threat, like, he's very intimidating and kind of scary, because you're thinking, like, yes, th this is how cult leaders work, but then near the end, and I guess mild spoiler here, uh, we find out he has just mind control powers, and I mean, again, this is a story about people with weird powers, it's not that strange that the villain would have them, but, you know, again, minor spoiler, uh, but yeah, like, that's how he gets so many people onto his side. And honestly, that just made him lesser of a villain for me, you know, because he j just, it, it seems so much more potent, I guess, if, the, if he's just manipulating people with his words, you know, because that's how real cult leaders do it. It makes him seem a little more real, a little more human, I guess, and that just makes him scarier, whereas this, he's just like, yes, the magic bad guy who uses his magic powers. So, uh, again, this is uneven, like, he's really good, and then he's not. At the beginning of the story, Mia seems like an addict. You know, again, she's addicted to being struck by lightning. It makes her 
Well, honestly, the way it's described, it seems like it makes her kind of horny, but whatever, that, that seems unintentional. Uh, but, you know, it seems like this would be a story about her, you know, trying to recover and trying to uh, accept herself and trying to understand herself and uh, about self-control and all that. But her arc is really more about protecting her brother and her mom. And, I, I mean, I guess there is some stuff about accepting herself, like acknowledging she has these powers and everything, but it it's just so all over the place. It, it's weird. And, like, again these individual arcs aren't bad, it just starts off like one thing and then suddenly it's another. Uh, there's Jeremy, who at first seems like he'll be, you know, a villain at first, and then he'll slowly grow to love her or something, and then he'll be her bad boy love interest. Uh, but there's really no process of him turning good, he just kind of seems like a villain at first, and then he's good. Like I mentioned earlier, this setting seems like it's in the middle of an apocalypse. You know, there's the earthquake which destroyed Los Angeles, and then it's mentioned that there are massive disasters happening elsewhere, too, which are destroying a large chunks of the world, at least, uh, which is part of why I was saying it, it is open for sequels. Like, we don't know exactly what's causing all that, but it doesn't seem natural. Uh, and it's mentioned that the United States is at war with a bunch of other places, which is part of why their uh, relief efforts in Los Angeles are so crappy. So, like, it's in the midst of an apocalypse, but the characters also go to high school, and they deal with petty drama there. Like, not that much, but they deal with petty drama there. Uh, there it seems like there would be a whole lot of time devoted to Mia trying to control her powers and learning what her powers even are, because I, even after reading it, I can't exactly define what they are. But it, there's very little of that, you know? Th this book just seems like it's going in so many directions, and then it goes in different directions, and that would make it seem almost like it's unfocused, but it doesn't feel unfocused. This book is so uneven, but at the same time, I liked so much of it. You know, I did like Mia. She's a fun protagonist to follow. Uh, I did like her relationship with Jeremy well enough. I didn't think it was amazing, but I mean, he's at least not uh, abusive or anything. Uh, I liked some of this setting that they built. Like, they didn't really dive into it that much, but I, I liked it, you know. I liked the villain for a while, but we didn't get that much about his personality or anything, and like I said, he becomes less intimidating once we realize he has powers. But I don't know, at the same time, I just, I liked this book. I, I can't even point to exactly what it was, but just the way all of these parts clumsily mesh together, just, I was into it. So I don't know, if the, if the idea of the premise interests you at all, I would say check it out at least, you know, maybe... Maybe don't buy it, but at least read it, sample pages on Amazon or check it out from the library or something. And if it doesn't hook you, then maybe you're just different than me. But I, I don't know. I, I was into it. Uh, but that's about all. Let's go to the spoiler section, and hopefully that will help things make a little bit more sense. You all right? Hey! So as I said... It feels like very little actually happens in this book, even though looking back on it I can point to a fair number of individual events, you know? Like we have Mia meeting the followers, Mia meeting Jeremy, Mia meeting the Seekers, and the climax, and there's a scene where she goes looking for her brother and goes to the giant tower nightclub. <laughs> it's, out of all the weird stuff in this book, that is the thing that really sticks out in my mind. Like, wh why? <laughs> why is that a thing? But then we get to near the end of the book, like the last quarter of it, maybe the last 20%, and then her mom, who has been kind of brainwashed by the prophet already, gets like full-on brainwashed by him, and then Mia also gets full-on brainwashed by him, and then he's gonna use them to do his evil plan, which is to destroy the world. We don't really know why he wants to do this, or what his goal is for afterwards, but he, he wants to destroy the world. Uh, and so he sets up this wedding where he's going to marry Mia's mother. Okay. Uh, and she manages to break through his mind control a little bit before this. And then he also brings in all of his followers, and uh, some of them also have powers. It's, it's really not explained how these work, just like some people have a lot of energy in them and can affect energy around them. And Mia has like a whole bunch, because she's the protagonist, she has to be super powerful. Uh, and he's also going to be broadcasting it on TV, and basically, even though there is no storm, he wants to summon another storm 
it, it, which will then the lightning will strike in the uh, fault in the tectonic plates and cause another earthquake but this one way bigger and it'll cause like a chain reaction of other earthquakes and tsunamis and volcanoes going off and stuff and that that'll destroy the world and the way he's going to do this is again by just he's convinced all the followers that the storm is going to happen and again some of them have powers and so like all their powers are being subconsciously combined together and then he also wants Mia to be there as the final ingredient to like really summon the storm and I know this sounds like weird and kind of vague and that's what it is like you understand it well enough to like feel as if there's not really any plot holes or anything uh, but still it is kind of odd how vague all of this is so Prophet forces Mia to like get the storm started and it starts going and then the Seekers come and they use their powers to fight a little bit and Mia like overcomes everything and she kills Prophet using her powers and her mom seems like she's about to die but then she strikes her excuse me with lightning and it like cauterizes the wound on her neck because Prophet slit her throat and she lived. I don't know how well that would actually work, but okay, sure, whatever. Uh, and then they're on the beach while this happens, and then she like runs to the giant rave tower and stands on top, and then she like gets struck by more lightning and just absorbs the whole storm into herself and prevents it from destroying the world. And then after that, her and Jeremy are a couple. And I mean, it's kind of insta-lovey. You know, like, again, they didn't seem like they hated each other up before this point. They did seem like they were at least getting along as friends, but I didn't feel any chemistry or romantic connection between them. Uh, but yeah, they're a couple now, and then that is just... That's the end of the book. Another reason why it felt like this was kind of prepping for there to be sequels, but then they just... they never came out, and I highly doubt there ever will be any. Like, I know there is a spin-off prequel novella, which I believe follows Jeremy before the events of the story, uh, but yeah, it's, I, I don't think there'll be any sequels because it's been almost 12 years since this came out and the author has not touched it since, and in fact she seems to be focusing more on screenwriting now, which, I mean, fair enough, but yeah, she's, she's not writing books anymore, but yeah, like that's, uh, that's the end and Mia gets struck by lightning and gets more scars because from the beginning of the book she covers up most of her body because after being struck by lightning, she has, like, these weird red lines, which are scars all over her, except for, like, her neck up. And then, after being struck again at the end of the book, it also covers her face, and she has, like, red veins in one of her eyes now. And it seems like it's saying, okay, she's super-powered or something. So, it, I don't know, it just, there's things here that seem like they're hinting at a sequel to come, but it just, it never did. And, yeah, that was, that, that struck... Like I said, there's not really any unifying themes here that tie it all together. The story is very clumsily put together. The world building is surface level at best. And yet, I just, I really liked it, and I want more. And I can't exactly explain why, which is a little embarrassing as a critic. But, you know, I just, I don't know, something about Struck just really grabbed me. And, I mean, we're probably never getting more, but I did enjoy it a lot. So, yeah, uh, those are my scattered thoughts on this very scattered, weird book. But, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't hate it. That's all. Uh, su subscribe and watch the video and ring the notification bell. Like, like the video, comment on it, share it around, uh, all that stuff I'm supposed to say. Goodbye. Oh my goodness, people are still watching this? I'm... I'm not sure why I thought most people clicked away before the credits started, but uh, yeah, these are all my Patreon, Patreon people, uh, and my $10 and up patrons are Oppo Savalane and Olivia Rayan, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dawn, Dio, Echo, Flax, Carcat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Microphone, Mistboy, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Ruby Ishmael, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, They Victus, and Wesley. All of you are great, and if you want your name on here, then consider becoming a patron. You get early access to my videos as well. It's it, it's a great deal, I promise. And if you don't want to do that, you know, you could always subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment on it so it goes around, uh, or, you know, becoming a YouTube channel member. That That's cool, too. Uh, follow all my socials and stuff, which are linked below. Uh, uh, I'll see you uh, goodbye.